Hey friends, welcome to the Town Hall Academy, episode 143. Now, I'm not telling you anything you don't know, but you know there's an app for just about any need or function you can think of. How many apps do you have on your smartphone? Well, this episode introduces you to the new My ASE Renewal app. I think you're going to like this and really answer one of the concerns that that caused us to enter into this environment in the first place. Help me understand what it is that I don't know, you know, the questions that I miss. Why did I miss them? And uh, the app does that. Welcome, automotive aftermarketers, to a Remarkable Results Radio Town Hall Academy. Listen to learn just one thing from today's episode on your journey to remarkable results. Hey friends, Carm Capriato, the Automotive Aftermarket Podcast Guy, and so glad to welcome you to Academy Episode 143. And I want to thank my sponsor, Jasper Engines, for keeping the lights on for this very powerful asset to the aftermarket. Now, do you know that Jasper's people make the difference in their company? That's one of the biggest reasons why service professionals purchase a Jasper quality remanufactured product. It's their people. A Jasper associate is dedicated to high quality customer service, committed to excellence and professional. And they've got pride of ownership as part of a 100% associate owned company. Visit jasperengines.com for more information. You find the talking points and my guests' bios and links to their previous episodes at remarkableresults.biz slash A143. And now don't hesitate to reach out to me with a show idea, a trend we need to discuss, or ask me to recommend a podcast to help you with a pain point. Reach me at CARM, C-A-R-M, at remarkableresults.biz, B-I-Z, or find a quick link to email me on my insider email or links all over my website. Hey, do you know that I'm on a crusade to get more aftermarket professionals turned on to this podcast treasure of wisdom? Well, your job in this crusade is to find the share button on whatever listening device that you're using and share this via email or your own social network. The more that listen, the better the entire industry gets because there's so much to absorb. And that's a big thank you, and especially for this episode. Hey, glad to have you here as you're going to get a very interesting and behind-the-scenes understanding of the My ASE Renewal app. Now, it's in beta. However, you can get on board. I find this a perfect evolution from ASE to embrace and engage every certified technician into keeping their certs current through this very intuitive app. Here's something great that I learned, and based on many technicians' requests, you can find out if you got an answer wrong and what the correct answer is. You'll hear the logistics behind how to get started and how to get questions sent to you each month based on the number of certifications that you have. This is so cool, no need to register for a test center, take time off work, or drive miles to sit for exams. Now, I do believe you'll find this new tool from ASE an important part of your credential process, and you may even dust off those expired credentials and get on board and renew them. Now, welcome John Tisdale and Kevin Likas from ASE, technician Rudy Mastaz, and app developer Ron Meyer. Yes, the great summit for the forever automotive aftermarket student. Glad to have you here. An exciting topic today, my ASE Renewal app. So there's an app for everything. You could buy food. You could have people wait in line for you at a restaurant if you had the right app. And now you can continue to stay perpetually certified, if I'm correct, with my ASE app. How exciting that is. With us is Kevin Likas, Project Manager, Special Testing Programs at ASE. Say hi. Hey, everyone. John Tisdale, Assistant Vice President at ASE. John's been there for 23 years and has had his hands involved in this project since the beginning. Right, John? Yes, I have, Carm, and uh, welcome, everyone. Uh, great to have you here today. Glad you're here. And uh, Ron Meyer is with us, the Chief, Chief Operating Officer of Higher Learning Technologies, HLT. They're the ASE developer. HLT has an impressive story about their products, including the nursing home industry. I know we don't have time to talk about that, but that is interesting. Ron, welcome. Thank you, Carm. I appreciate it. And Rudy Mestaz is here from Nick Modesti's Car Care in Southern California. Now, Rudy's an ASE recertified master automobile technician with an L1. He's been certified since... 2006. Well, glad to have you here, and I know you've been involved in in in, in are working the ASE uh, renewal app, right? I am. Yes, it's uh, as I understand it, it's in the beta phase right now. So that's uh, I signed up for that. 
Yes. Beta. You know, sometimes things go are in beta forever. Right. <laughs> and and hopefully you guys are going to announce one day that it's coming out of beta. So look at John, you're the senior man here. I want to start with you. By the way, thank you all so much for being here to help educate every one of us, shop owners, technicians, service advisors, to the fact that now we can reach out and and not have to worry about scheduling and going to a testing center. We can do this on the fly. So John, why did ASE create this app? As you can imagine, being uh, in the business here, ASE being in the business of uh, offering credentials for technicians for over 40 years, uh, you know, we've had to adapt to a lot of uh, different changes uh, in our industry, uh, particularly how we serve our customers in our industry. And uh, really, the uh, creation of the app came as a result of input from technicians, you know, our customers who uh, seek out and see value in the technician in uh, certification and uh, seek it out from us. Um, recertify primarily we heard a lot of feedback from them that uh, you know they come back every five years traditionally to uh, to recertify with us and keep their credentials current um, but we've always heard feedback from them about you know the whole testing process of you know the test center and uh, you know what what does recertification testing really do for me you know does it help me learn I'd really like to see the questions that I miss uh, a whole myriad of different uh, input that you know has kind of melded itself together and you know over time as technology has changed and uh, this uh, opportunity to uh, enter into the environment of a maintenance of certification model that a lot of other industries are engaging in that offer professional credentialing for their practitioners. Um, we've, um, you know, we've ventured into that world and hopefully offering a, uh, a tool that's going to have a value of keeping credentials, not only keeping credentials current in a more convenient way, but also uh, assisting technicians uh, to identify gaps in their knowledge uh, and help drive them to uh, training that's going to keep them sharp in their field uh, and do the best they can every day in the shop servicing their customers. John, take us to the day you guys sat around the room and made this big corporate decision to do this. Uh, it, 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 you had to be super excited about, you know, really getting to the next level. Absolutely. Um, you know, we, we've been for years uh, talking about, you know, different options of how we might modify the, uh, the whole recertification process. Uh, you know, as technology started to progress with, uh, with uh, apps, you know, mobile apps on, on the phone, um, you know, ASC was looking at uh, different ways of, hey, how, how could we, you know, come up with a good app that would have uh, application and value to our customer and, uh, you know, in, in, that in the same conversation as, you know, trying to modify the recertification process, uh, you know, with the research and other things that are going on in other industries, you know, those two thoughts collided and, and here we are and a very exciting place to be, um, you know, emulating a lot of what other credentialing industries are doing with uh, the delivery, uh, which Ron will talk a little bit about, but, um, but yeah, very, very exciting uh, uh, venture for us to, to uh, dive into. Kevin, let me ask you, um, how's the app work? The app actually works uh, very easy. It's a very intuitive uh, product that we have out there. First off, to sign up for the app, you're going to head over to the My ASE Renewal website. And the address is www.myasrenewal.com. Now, sometimes we get asked the question, why are you doing that? Why can't we just go to the ASE website and sign up for the app? Well, part of it is what kind of Rudy was alluding to a little bit earlier is we are in the process of uh, fine tuning the app and it is in a beta phase right now. And currently the app is being housed over at Higher Learning Technologies. And so their website is what contains all the information. When somebody signs up, they actually are putting in their email address and creating a password on their server. From there, they go ahead ahead and give their ASC ID to the HLT website. That comes back over to us. We then tell them what certifications the person has. They go back into the system and it's able to uh, get started and go right on in. So based on the certifications that they have, they'll actually receive those on their uh, phone. And once I sign up, what starts happening? Okay, so once you sign up, there's a couple things that can occur. First, you can sign up for a three free day trial. So all you need is an ASC ID. So you go ahead, sign up. We've got a series of questions over there to kind of give you the flavor and the feel about how the app works. And uh, they are random, so they're not really associated with any particular certification that you may have already earned. But it kind of gives you an idea of how it works, how we deliver the items. You answer a question, you get it correct. Uh, we go ahead and uh, send you the next one. You 
you answer a question incorrect, we go ahead and tell you why the answer was incorrect, and then we send you a second chance item that will come a little bit later and give you that opportunity then to hopefully learn from uh, the lack of knowledge you had with that previous question. Excellent. Well, we're going to dive back into some more of the the how-tos and the the tactics behind this. But, Ron, I want to drag you in here since you're the app maker. And what's amazing is, I don't know how many apps you guys have on your phone, but I got a lot. The the good news is, and and we too have a a lot of apps, and and we've we've developed a number over the years, over the course of about seven years or so, many different industries. And uh, our heritage is in the healthcare industry, but we've kind of moved a little bit out of that. And uh, when ASC came to us with this idea, you know, to kind of change the rules a little bit around uh, certification in the automotive industry. We were very excited. We were able to take our uh, our platform, a lot of best practices that we've applied, you know, as John had said, in, in some other industries and really kind of bring it into this uh, this big idea that they had brought to us. So we were we were very excited, came out of that dark room and, uh, and we were able to deploy uh, the actual, the pilot app um, last year during uh, 2018. And then we moved into beta this year in 2019. Rudy, uh, so glad to have you here. Uh, you're a you're a user of this app, so you know. We're, we're, did they knock on your door way back in the beginning and says, "Hey, we know you, we love you. Can you can you play in the sandbox with us?" Uh, no, not at all. Actually, someone else was using the app and um, brought it to our attention on one of the uh, automotive uh, technicians' web forms. So I uh, he uh, displayed the link. I clicked on the link. I looked it up. I read on about it and uh, it seemed interesting. It seemed like the way to go. So I t- decided to give it a try. So you bought in. It didn't take you but a few minutes to realize that this was something for you. I, I, I'm i 43 and I think that I'm in the generational age between boomers and, and millennials. So technology is, is familiar, really familiar with me. You know, I kind of grew up when the internet was just starting to take off. So it using apps, I have like, like you have a ton of apps on my phone. And for me, anything that streamlines the old way of doing things, especially like through an app is, I think it's much better. Rudy, is it, have you found it to be a time saver? Have you? Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's tremendously. Yeah. Um, we're normally, you have to go, you have to take time off work. Well, you know, initially when the, with the paper and pencil testing, that was a real hassle. But when they moved to computer-based testing, I, that was a little easier. But even here in, in the metropolis city like Los Angeles, the test centers are still kind of far, you know, from uh, from like where you live or where you work. The closest test center to me is like 15 miles away. Okay. So I'd have to take time off of work and um, schedule a test and then go sit for a few hours uh, utilizing the app, I can take a test question any time of the day, any, any whenever I want. And, uh, the, the questions are timed is typically about two or three minutes per question. And, um, you, you can just, I can knock it out on my lunch break. Okay. He, he brought up something excellent, Kevin, and I want to go to you. He said you, need, you have two or three minutes. So, uh, Let's talk a little bit about how the app works. If I signed up, forget my three-day trial, I'm in. Now, what do I expect? How does it work? So based on the certifications you have previously earned, you are going to be immediately delivered one question. And once you choose that question, you have anywhere between two to five minutes to answer the question. If the question is textual based, it's typically that two minute window. And if it's got illustrations or a lot of information to process, we give you a five minute window. From there, once you answer that question, you get it right or you get it wrong. And then after we tell you what's going on, you can then move on to your next certification. Then after you've answered all your questions, 30 days later, we're going to go ahead and send you your next round. Now, one thing I probably should mention here is when you answer a question, you earn a point. And then the whole goal of the app, besides the convenience and the learning piece of it, there's a reward at the end. And the reward is after earning eight points, we're going to extend the expiration date of your certification by one year. And this would apply to both people with expired credentials as well as current credentials. Of course, if you're expired, we're going to go ahead and make them current and then push it out. But if you are a current certified technician, you'll earn a one-year extension for answering the questions. How do I earn one point? Answer the question correctly. If I answer eight questions correctly, I get extended a year? 
Well, yeah, and it's per certification. Ah. So you get one question per month. So you have the opportunity to earn one point per month per certification. And then once you have earned eight credits, that's when your extension is going to be awarded. I was maybe... Mis- misunderstood Rudy when he says, hey, if I have a few minutes, I'll take a test. It's not when you want. I mean, yes, you can pick the time, but you still only get one question a month. Per certification area. Yes, that is correct. If you had three or four certifications, you're expecting to get one, uh, four, four questions a month. Yes. And in Rudy's case, where he's a master technician, he's going to receive eight questions every 30 days. Go, going back to you, Rudy, does that work uh, out of a four-week month that you're going to get about eight questions tossed at you? But again, you pick the time they come in to you, right? Right. Um, as, as far as I know, there's no time limit as to when you can answer the question. So uh, I never tried. Maybe Kevin can answer it. Maybe you can carry them over month to month and answer all of your questions at once. I don't know. I've always, as soon as a new question came, it was available to me, I jumped on it. Yeah, and the way that the system is designed, if somebody did want to hold on to them, they absolutely could. But ASC was hoping that there would be continuous engagement. And exactly the experience Rudy is having is what we were hoping would occur here because we are trying to focus in on some some newer technology, more of that leading edge type of technology. And by doing this continuously over time, the hope is that when the technicians see some of this new technology come into their bay, they're going to be a little bit more familiar with it and know where to get the information so that when they have to work on those cars, they're not just completely blown out of the water by something that's brand new. Okay, your customer's engine or transmission has failed, but now is not the time for them to trade their vehicle. Not without a working engine or transmission. Besides, would they have kept their vehicle another three to five years if their engine or transmission had not let them down? Well, if you answered yes, then Jasper Engines and Transmissions is your choice to give your customer's vehicle new life and many thousands of miles of enjoyable driving performance. When considering the high cost of a new or newer used vehicle, there's a pretty good case to be made for your customers to replace a drivetrain component that has failed or is delivering poor performance, rather than trading their car, truck, van, or SUV. Install a quality remanufactured Jasper product for less than your customer would have to invest in a different vehicle. Go to jasperengines.com to learn more about the money-saving value of Jasper. Rudy, uh, have you taken a a test question and got it wrong? Uh, (laughs) A few times. Um, I, I think that some of the questions, for me, they seem to be manufacturer specific. In this phase of the uh, of, of the app right now, we can we can pose questions to I guess the developers or the test writers. They would point out how they developed the question, and if they think the question is not manufacturer manufacturer specific, they think it's more broad or general. The questions that I got wrong were questions that I, I was fairly certain they were manufacturer specific. A whole bunch of things are going through my head, and hopefully, I can get them landed. When you get the wrong answer they do they tell you what the right one is then they do yes and and then you take exception to that Uh, yeah Uh uh-huh guys is it because it's in beta that 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 exception can happen it's wrong even if you take exception to it it's wrong but you can challenge it right in the app okay and that allows the team at asc to see what what the what the trend is or what's what the ear to the ground is in the field right Yeah. And, you know, Carm, what we were talking about, about trying to bring that leading edge technology out to everybody, that's where sometimes these type of issues happen. Uh, You know, we don't know everything. Most technicians out there don't know everything unless you, you talk to them. Some of them, they'll tell you they know everything. But the truth is, you know, there are gaps in people's knowledges out there. And with the way the technology is evolving and when there's so many new things coming out, uh, a good example is going to be around the whole ADAS systems. Uh, those things are changing so rapidly and there's a lot of folks out there that are unfamiliar with what's going on and how that technology works. These are the type of things that we try to focus in on with the app. And we fully expect that 
folks are going to have a hard time with some of the questions. But the thing is, we are giving them a second chance and if necessary, up to a third chance. And we are trying to keep the questions in groups or families so that when that second chance or the third chance question comes around, that the information that is being discussed in those questions is going to be the same as the first question that was delivered to the technician. So the hope is that they go out and go, wait a second, I don't agree with this. I'm going to go ahead and choose my favorite search engine, they go ahead and type in and they start doing some learning. And then maybe they get even more upset and they go talk to one of their buddies. And then now two people are sitting there learning about this and discussing it. And so when the question comes back around, they'll be prepared for it. And then again, they'll have a better understanding of how the system works. Yeah, what I just heard, John, from Kevin, it sounds like you guys have really thought this through. We've done uh, a lot of, uh, you know, back behind the scenes, uh, you know, research and, and really thinking through uh, some of the some of the same principles that we've applied to content development, you know, since the beginning of time, since uh, ASC began in 1972, uh, with a little bit of a variation, as Kevin said, you know, dealing with more uh, leading edge technology topics. Um, and again, you know, the, the value to the app is, as Rudy already, already mentioned, and this is what offers a value to our recertifiers, something I touched on was we'll tell them right right then and there, if they answer a question incorrectly, we'll tell them why they're, the answer choice that they chose that was incorrect, we'll tell them why that's incorrect. And we'll tell them why the other two answer options were incorrect and why the correct option that we intended them to uh, to answer or measure their knowledge with, we'll tell them why that is correct, you know, a brief statement. So, so previously in any of the other tests, you you didn't have that feature. So in order to build this app, to design a question and to explain the right answer, you guys have had to do a lot of extra work. That's true. We, we have, but you know, that's what, uh, hopefully we're, we're building into the app to, to give it a higher level of value and really answer one of the concerns that, that caused us to enter into this environment in the first place. Help me understand what it is that I don't know. You know, the questions that I miss, why did I miss them? And, uh, the app does that and uh, offers that learning opportunity. And Karma, I wanted to mention one other thing. It, it, it may have gotten buried a little bit. Um, you know, we think about historically how we learn textbooks and things of that nature. We think about historically the way recertification exams have happened in a test center where you really can't interact, you know, with with the uh, the proctor and really ask questions about content, et cetera. Uh, the app really gives a lot of good opportunity here, right? So you're inside of it. Obviously, the focus is on learning. You want to do your renewal. But once you've answered a question, you've got a couple different options. Um, if there are any technical glitches with the app, um, if you really have a question for us as the app provider, right inside the app, you can basically hit a question mark in the upper right-hand corner, send us a question, our customer service people will get back with you very quickly. But another feature, and, and, and this was what Rudy was talking about, if you do take exception or you, you, wanna just, you just want to know more about this concept, you, along with everybody else who's seen this item, can participate in a discussion thread. So if we think about the forums that we're all part of in our industries, et cetera, right inside that item, you can basically, you know, push on the little blue bubble at the bottom and really just kind of make your comment, ask your question. And then everybody who has been on this item before or who will see it in the future will be able to help you understand the concept better. And then, you know, we kind of get a really good opportunity to do, you know, really kind of crowdsourcing of knowledge and learning. So those, those are a couple of features I, I wanted to mention that, that do support the, the concepts here. Hey, I want to uh, thank uh, Kevin Likas, John Tisdale, Ron Meyer, and Rudy Mestaz to be here talking about my ASE app. And if you're listening uh, and hanging out with us on Facebook, give us a share inside of your network. So far, good stuff. Good stuff, guys. Hey, Kevin, uh, what formats, devices, uh, Apple's, Android, what, what can I, can I even use Windows on my desktop? Uh, basically all of the above to sign up for the app you have to start out with a pc so that's where you go ahead and create your account or if you were doing it on a mobile device you'd have to do it through a browser such as chrome safari something like that but then once you've created your account and everything is active and up and running then you can head over to your favorite app store whether it's uh, google play or the apple app store and you can download the app right onto your phone and you would just sign in with the email account and password you've created and away you go 
Pixel. It's going to look very similar to uh, the PC version of it. And, you know, for some of us like myself, that uh, the eyeballs aren't as good as they used to be a few years ago, well, maybe the PC might be a little bit more helpful to you. And uh, that's available in that format as well. The only things that it really doesn't work too well on is like a Kindle or an Amazon Fire or one of those type of devices. But if you have got... Uh, either an Apple or an Android cell phone, and you have a PC or an Apple, those things will be the machines to use with the app. So, John, maybe you're the guy to answer this question. Uh, you you always bring in subject matter experts to write the questions, and you vet them religiously. I remember being part of a parts specialist program many years ago, and I was so amazed as a, to what it takes to, you know, the comprehensiveness that ASE goes through to, to, to write questions. Now, are you writing two serious sets of questions, one for the app and one for the normal process? We are, Carm. Uh, that's a that's a great question. Um, we are developing all of this content for the app to use exclusively in the app. Obviously, um, using it in the app and in, in a mobile device and and out of the in the way that we are, uh, that content's getting out in the public domain, if you will. Um, and so, uh, and that's okay because you know the way that this program works. Uh, again, you know the learning aspect, as Kevin had already mentioned, if two people are discussing a question, it's not really cheating. You know, learning's going on, and people are, are becoming better in their, uh, you know, in their knowledge base. So. Um, but what we do want to do is keep the secure questions secure, the questions that we're going to use in the secure testing center to test first-time certifiers. Uh, we want to make sure that we keep those questions secure and, uh, you know, tightly held so that, you know, those certification tests, uh, the validity of them and the defensibility of them uh, aren't in any way, shape, or form compromised for someone earning a credential from us for the first time. Ron, that had to pose you a huge challenge. You know, and, and it is. Outside the test center and, and in situations like this, um, you know, if people want to cheat, they will cheat. However, I think ASC has taken, you know, probably a, a much, you know, more mature view of this, which is it's a learning app, right? The goal is to support lifelong learners. It isn't so much cheating whenever you talk to somebody else because you and they are probably learning right alongside each other. And that really is the ultimate goal. So, um we certainly still have, you know, some standard methods. You have to log in. You have to have, you know, credentials, a password, et cetera, even to get onto your phone, right? Most of us have, you know, some type of protection there. So it's not as if the content is is being, you know, shared outside of that with a lot of different people. You know, we take the, the best measures we can. But, you know, like anything, if people really want to cheat, they will find ways to, you know, to take this information shared, et cetera. But I think it's it's really, it's a different perspective now on on, you know, how that can actually be used as a foundation for learning. I like that, John. That's that's a huge uh, statement that that Ron just said. I mean, he basically said we're committed to lifelong learning in a way we never expected. Yeah, absolutely. And and you know, that's one of the things that uh, we hope is going to transcend through the future of the app uh, to really have it assist the automotive industry in uh, in providing the opportunity to expand that learning of of our practitioners uh, in hopes to make them them all better and continue to to uh, stay tops in their field uh, throughout their career. Excellent, excellent. So, so that's the vision that you have for the app, that it's just going to uh, grow and flourish and become the standard bearer for ASE. We hope so. Uh, you know, again, you know, we're we're uh, we're looking at uh, you know from from the value uh, proposition. You know, this adding a, a higher you know level of value for uh, for the user. Um, you know, as a, as uh, opposed to uh, just uh, pure taking a test, tests designed to test your knowledge, but uh, tests aren't really designed to teach. Um, so we like the opportunity for the teaching aspect uh, with my SE Renewal App Program uh, to really, you know, again, you know, further that mission to uh, not only help technicians stay in the fold, which is going to keep us uh, with a, a large base of credentialed practitioners out in the field, you know, assisting the industry with having qualified folks out there working on the vehicles every day, but also, you know, the aspects of this uh, expanding knowledge base and, and keeping folks uh, current with the ever-changing technology we all face in our industry. Well, let me put the challenge out to anyone who's watching this uh, on Facebook right now or who will watch this over the weekend and once we repurpose it uh, next Thursday. Please share this. Uh, I, I think uh, I, I'm, I'm just going to make an assumption that there's there needs to be 
a much bigger segment of the industry that needs to know this, embrace this, sign up and do something about it so that this whole thing blossoms and lives. John, I, I, I don't know if I'm saying it right, but uh, you probably need a whole lot more players to, to make this thing really work. Yeah, and right now, uh, again, we as we've touched on, you know, we are in a beta phase. Um, we are still in in uh, testing and acceptance uh, mode, if you will. Um, we've still we've from where we've started, we've come a long way, but we've still got a long way to go. Right. Okay. So, yeah. So, so do you sit down, guys? Uh, Kevin or John answer this um, with with text like Rudy. Um, you know, after they've been on for a few months, or are you bringing a panel together of my ASE subscribers and asking them their insights on the app? Yeah, we have been doing exactly that. Uh, we have been holding some webinars here, and we have been inviting key players. Uh, the app itself right now is is pushing right around nine to ten months old of being in the beta phase. And so, if you remember, we were talking about earning eight credits. Well, that's exactly what's happening right now. We are getting our first handful of people, and it's uh, it's a couple hundred actually. So it's more than a handful. But the first few uh, hundred adopters have uh, started earning their extensions, and so we've actually been reaching out to them holding invitational webinars, trying to get feedback from them. Uh, we have been sending out some surveys through our marketing team and uh, just trying to find out what do they like? What don't they like about this? What could we do better? And that's really kind of what the beta phase is about, is about doing that fine tuning. Because once we do go into full production, uh, we really don't want to mess with it very much. We want to go ahead and uh, keep it the way that it is and then let everyone have the same experience. Uh, a side note, Ron, are you tweaking this a lot? I would say we're doing some changes. Uh, we actually made probably more during the beta last year. Um, I'm sorry, during the pilot. Uh, during the beta, we certainly have made some. A lot of the changes we tweak actually are behind the scenes in terms of how we do question underneath, delivery underneath and covers, things like yeah, that. Yeah. yeah. Um, the the user experience is similar because you have to understand we've had about 8 million downloads of our various apps and they all have a similar user experience. So we've actually made you know a lot of refinements to that user experience over the years. Yeah, so. you, your, the history of of you as an app maker brought a lot of um, right. legacy to ASC because because you've been there and done that. Right. Got it. Got it. Rudy, what are your buds saying in the industry about this? I think for the most part, people like it. Those that have signed up, uh, surprisingly, uh, a lot of technicians don't know about it. <laughs> so I tell them, yeah, I signed up on online. I'm recertifying online. And they're surprised to hear about that. There are a lot of people uh, that really don't know about the app. Okay. John, what are you doing to promote this to the to the industry? That's a really good question, Carm. Um, because we're in the beta phase, we have actually... There, the reason why a bunch of people haven't heard about this is that's purposeful. Um, we, we actually started off in beta mode uh, and reached out to a, a cross-demographic group of technicians um, so that we could look at uh, different uh, appetites for, for the app. People that were totally expired. Okay, people that are expiring end of this year, people that are expiring one year out from now or two years out from now. So that was actually very purposeful so that we could research uh, the acceptance side and find out, you know, exactly what we talked about. You know, what are the likes and dislikes and what fine tuning do we need to make? So when we do release it to the t entire population of technicians, um, it, that it basically can just run and everybody has the same experience. So again, we're still in the beta. We're still in the testing and, and tweaking mode. Okay, so I won't release this episode and we'll take it down off of uh, Facebook uh, in an hour. No, we don't. We don't. We're not saying that. <laughs> know, we're not saying I know, that. I'm, <laughs> I'm kidding. And you, I think you're right. I mean, you know, Matt just chimed in here and says it, it's it's the, the technician's job through, I guess, you know, word of mouth marketing and, uh, you know, sharing and telling people to promote this. But it seems to me that not every tech in the U.S. is certified and we could use a whole lot more. And the same the same may be for uh, for for the app and in the and for so many technicians that do not have any ASE credentials. This could be a groundswell for you guys. Yeah, you know, Carm, it is. And we actually, when we were putting this thing together, we were targeting some very specific demographics. And one of those is folks that have been previously certified, but have since, for various reasons, uh, let their certifications lapse. And so if you are a technician that has an expired credential, but you have interest in getting your credential back up and being current, this app is absolutely for you. Not only is it going to help to bring out 
the uh, information than in the, the most current vehicles that's out there, but it'll give you a way that there's not the pressure behind it. Because, you know, we hear a lot of times about test anxiety and like Rudy was talking about having to take time off work and things like that. So employers like this, the technicians like it, it's the convenience side of it, but we want to get those folks to come back into the fold. And if this is a great, easy, inexpensive way for them to do it, then, you know, we welcome them on board. Hey, this was great. Well, I've got a real quick story I'd like to share. I'd love to and, hear it. Uh, it is. It's really a. It's a fun one. Uh, we do have a private Facebook group, and so for people who have paid to subscribe to the app, they can jump on board and they can talk with their other technicians. And it's really a fun place. And I've been enjoying uh, getting to know technicians more than just the the higher level that I normally interact with them. And one of the comments Rudy made, I've heard over and over again, that these questions are manufacturer specific and uh, they're not real world and so on and so forth. But what happens is a lot of that stuff is very leading edge technology. And so there are a handful of, of manufacturers that are utilizing it, but the, the technology is going to become more predominant. I had a technician that uh, got a hold of me and was uh, pretty upset about a dual clutch transmission question that was in the app. And uh, this particular technician worked for a manufacturer that did not have any any dual clutch transmissions in their lineup. So I just did my due diligence. I jumped online and I did a couple searches and lo and behold, that manufacturer about three months ago had just been awarded a patent for a dual clutch transmission on a new car that they were going to be releasing in the 2020 model year. And so my response back to that technician was, I guess this app is really just right in time with you because you don't really know anything about this transmission, but next year you're going to see this car in your bay. And uh, it was just a really neat story that uh, ended with somebody not uh, really happy with what was going on and you know it, it turned out to be really good so at lots of stories like that but it's a, definitely a fun one well you guys are really on the cutting edge then in, in in question writing we try to and that's actually the uh challenge that we gave to our industry experts we brought together the committees and we tell them we want to start focusing in on leading edge stuff now the aftermarket doesn't have the luxury sometimes that the manufacturer side has of seeing a, a technology or a product, uh, typically those vehicles are only seen once they come out of warranty. And so we want to try to focus in on technologies that technicians, one, are having difficulty with, but two, we're trying to help the industry and prepare them for what's coming down the pipe. And uh, I think the app is meeting both of those goals really nicely. What I like that he just said, and anyone can take exception with that by saying, well, listen, uh, that that's that's not fair because you know that you're talking about the future. I haven't gone to a class on that. I haven't read a thing about a, a dual class clutch. The thing that's beautiful about the app, correct me if I'm wrong, is that I get a chance to take another question. That's correct. And so I learned from the fact that, oh my God, that is out there and it is cutting edge and it is part of our future. And okay, I learned something. Now give me something I can answer. <laughs> and so you, you get, that's... You, you, you basically get a chance. How many, how many chances? Three? You get up to three chances. So if you miss it the first time, 30 days later, we'll give you a second chance. If you miss it the second time, 30 days after that, you get your third chance. And it's kind of like baseball, three strikes and you're out. And you've just lost that opportunity then to earn a point. But over a 12-month time period, we're going to give everybody up to 36 chances to earn eight points. And uh, we feel that that's uh, very generous and that is uh, more than fair to allow somebody to uh, earn enough points to extend their credential. And how many questions per certification? Well, you're going to get 12 over a 12-month time period. So it's it's something we want, again, for that continuous learning cycle to occur. So once every 30 days, you'll get what we call a core question. And then if you get that core question wrong, then you'll get your second chance question 30 days after that. Otherwise, your regularly scheduled question or your core question will come every 30 days. Uh, and that's how it's set up in the timer. So right around, let's say, if you're going to question on the 25th of the month, every month around the 25th, depending on the number of days within the month, you'll receive another question. And Rudy, you can live with all this, right? I, I like it. You know, uh, I think different technicians may have different opinions. But for me personally, I, I think it's great. Well, again, you know, as as uh, as Kevin's kind of already touched on, and we've we've you know pretty much uh, identified here today, you know, really the the. The idea here is, is that with those leading edge topics, you know, we're, the main purpose of the app is to help create an awareness uh, in technicians where the gaps of their knowledge are or exist, you know, with this up and coming technology that they may not have experienced yet. Uh, 
create an awareness of, of that gap in their knowledge, drive them towards uh, learning about that, and give them a second chance to demonstrate that they have learned it. And in a nutshell, that, that's what the app is all about and designed to do, uh, it, is to help them learn, be, be better, expand their knowledge, serve their customers better, and at the same time, uh, keep their certifications current pretty much in perpetuity by continuing to participate in the MySE Renewal Program. A student in perpetuity, one of my favoriteest words, John. Thank you for bringing that up. Uh, hey, listen, this was great. I, I enjoyed it. I, uh, I, th- I, think we, uh, I think we may have hit a home run here, at least uh, in the ability to, to teach the rest of the world what's going on with uh, my ASE Renewal app. Thank you, Kevin Likas, Project Manager at ASE. John Tisdale, Assistant Vice President at ASE. Ron Meyer, COO of Higher Learning Technologies, who created the ASE app. And Rudy Mestaz, our practical get-it-done technician kind of guy who pretty much says, I love it. Hey, guys, have a great weekend. Thanks for being here. Thanks for being on board to listen and learn from the premier automotive aftermarket podcast. Until next time.